In this video, I'm excited to share with you my actual cash flow over the last month from trading options and collecting dividends in the month of June. I think you'll see and understand why I like selling options so much. They can generate tremendous monthly cash flow as you're going to see in this video. I'm also going to discuss a couple of trades that I made over the past 30 days, along with the lessons that can be learned from them that will help you be a more profitable option and stock trader. And stay tuned until the end of this video because I'm going to show you how I'm getting a jump start right now on my July option cash flow. I tell you all about that at the end of this video. I'm excited to share today's information with you and I think you're going to find great benefit in it. So let's get started. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. You're going to get a ton of extremely valuable information in today's video. But before I get started, I wanted to remind you that option trading can be very risky if it's not done properly. Before you make a trade, please consult with your financial advisor. Do not just take my word for it. I'm only sharing my journey here. I'm not suggesting any of these trades to you. I'm solely using them for teaching purposes. So please do your own research. I first wanted to share with you the cash flow that I received from selling options and collecting dividends in the month of June. As we quickly go through these four pages of trades, you will see here that at the bottom, circled in red, the net amount that we collected by selling options. This includes buying back some old positions and selling new ones. But the net that we collected from options was $8,143. On top of that, we received dividends, circled in blue, from the two companies that we already own. These were stocks that we had sold put options on in the past and they had been put into our account. We collected $348 from ExxonMobil and $147 from 3M. In all, we collected a total of $495 in dividends in the month of June. When we add the $8,143 we receive as net option premium as well as the $495 we received in dividends, the total we received for the month was $8,638. No one can take that money away from us. It's our cash to keep and use, and it's real money, and it's also an 18.9% annualized cash on cash return for our entire portfolio. If this is the kind of content you'd like to see and hear, click the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll know as soon as we release our next weekly video. Now I want to share with you several lessons that can be learned from the trades that I made over this past month. Let's first focus on this trade here where we sold call options against a stock that had been assigned to us in Core Civic, ticker symbol CXW. Now this is a stock that we had begun selling some put options in several months back. It's a very tiny position in our portfolio, but I was trying to increase my REIT exposure and companies I thought would withstand a recession. And so this is one of the ones that I chose. Unfortunately, things haven't gone as planned. The stock has crashed and the company actually stopped paying a dividend. Now, if you've watched some other videos, you know that I pretty much only trade stocks that pay dividends. There are a few exceptions to that rule. If it's a high growth company like Amazon, Facebook, or Google, but generally I'm trading dividend paying companies. So if a company stops paying a dividend, it's most likely a position that I want to get out of. Now, I could have liquidated the position immediately when they announced the dividend suspension, but I chose not to do that, and here's why. Even though Core Civic stopped paying a dividend, I can still generate decent cash on cash return by selling call options. As soon as I found out that they had cut the dividend, I immediately sold call options on the 200 shares that I own. I only received 25 cents per share, and what's interesting here, if you notice, is that Interactive Brokers actually paid me 21 cents to do this trade because they classified the trade as being a market maker. So I got 25 cents per share by selling these call options. If you calculate that over a year's time frame, it equates to a 7.1% annualized return based on my $14 per share purchase price. But keep in mind that before the stock was put into our account, and even after that, we've been selling options against this stock. As such, even though we had to buy the stock at $14 per share, 
our cost basis is only $11.53. So by selling these call options that expire in September and receiving 25 cents per share, if you calculate our annual cash on cash return based on our cost basis of $11.53, well, it equates to an 8.7% cash on cash return. Now, obviously that's not what we're looking for. We want to do a lot better than an 8.7% annualized return. But I've decided that I will continue to sell these call options until the stock comes back to the $14 strike price that it was put into my account at and the stock is called away from me. Until then, every few months, I'm going to roll these call options and our cost basis will continue to decrease and we'll continue to get a decent return from this position. And that's on a position that's actually down 28% from where it was put into our account. That's why I love options so much. If done right, options can turn losers into cash flowing winners. In the comments below, tell me what your favorite stocks are to trade options in. I'm curious to see what companies you're trading right now. Let's take a look at another trade I made this month and that company is Disney. I made a video discussing how I use leap options on stocks that don't pay dividends. If you'd like to check it out, the link is above and in the description below. But let's see how using options on a non-dividend paying company can generate awesome returns. Here you see a list of trades that we have made since we entered the Disney Leap position. We initially bought the January 2022 $85 strike call option and immediately sold a January 2022 $150 strike call option. That cost us a net of $17.34. Since that time, we have sold call options against it, been able to collect $1.56 per share. Well, what is the current value of this overall position? As you can see here, the July 17 $130 call option that we sold for $1.02 is now only worth $0.11. Cents. So our overall position is worth $27.78. Our initial cost was $17.34, so that gives us a profit of $10.44. That means that as of right now, we are up 60% on a position that we opened a little over three months ago. Again, if you'd like to see how I put this trade together, check out the video in the description section below about LEAP options. Using LEAP options can be an awesome way to generate tremendous returns on non-dividend paying stocks. LEAP options could give you downside protection, all while helping you receive almost 100% of the upside movement of the stock if they're traded properly. Next, I want to point out to you a trade that I closed out in Johnson & Johnson. As you can see here, we closed out the June 130 strike puts for a cost of $0.08 cents per share. Johnson & Johnson is one of my favorite companies of all time. I love the company, I love the products, and I love the dividend that it pays. But I was not loving the return that I would have received by selling an option that expires in July. As you can see here, when this option became nearly worthless, down to only $0.08 cents per share, I bought it back. Now I tried to roll this into a new short option put position that expired in July at a strike that I felt comfortable with, but I could not find one that generated more than an 11% annualized cash on cash return. That is unacceptable to me. I do not want to open a new position that generates less than a 15% cash on cash return. And preferably, I want a new position to generate at least a 20% annualized cash on cash return. The exception is that it's just a position that I'm extremely excited about. As such, I closed out Johnson & Johnson and used the money to open a new position in a different stock. The lesson to be learned here is if there's not enough premium in the option you're looking to trade, just don't trade it. There are plenty of other good companies that provide good premium. I will trade Johnson & Johnson again. As a matter of fact, I'm watching it weekly for the price to come down to a strike price that I feel comfortable with where I can be rewarded sufficiently by selling a new put option in the stock. I will trade Johnson & Johnson again, but I'll wait until the reward is worth the risk. This happened several other times in positions that I have, such as you'll see here in Starbucks and also in Walgreens. Again, they're both companies that I really like and I have been selling put options in them but I will not trade them if they don't get a sufficient cash on cash return for us. Finally, at the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to show you how I'm getting a jump start on July's option premium cash flow. Let me show you exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it right now. On my interactive brokers trading platform, I have alerts set up so that anytime a position value drops to a specified amount, I get an alert. Here you see just a portion of the alerts that I have set up. Notice that I'm focusing on how much time premium is left in these positions. 
For example, if a put option has gone in the money, then obviously it's not going to become worthless because it always has some value in it as long as it's still in the money. As such, not only do I have an alert set on the option that I sold, but also on the corresponding call or put option at the same strike price. I do this so I get an alert as soon as the option's time value premium becomes nearly worthless. I set these alerts as soon as I enter a new position. It's just a reminder for me to buy back those nearly worthless positions and either roll that money into a new option in the same stock for the next month or just close it out if I can't get sufficient return and enter a new position in a new company. Here you will see that in addition to the alerts, I also like to have orders sitting out there so that if the orders happen to get hit on those positions, I get an awesome return. Here you see examples of orders I have sitting out there waiting to get hit. These orders will generate a minimum of 15% cash on cash return, but some of them are over 40% cash on cash return. Two examples of these are the orders I have sitting out there in Coca-Cola and Toronto Dominion Bank. And notice the order sitting out there in ABV, ticker symbol ABBV. This is a stock that I've owned for a while now, and I've been selling call options against the stock that I own. It's been collecting nice dividends as well. It's a stock that I really like. I don't want it called away from me, and I don't want to sell the stock. The stock has moved around a lot over the past year or two. The call option I sold at $75, that strike price call is now deep in the money. So now I'm trying to buy back the September 75 call before the ex-dividend date here in a few weeks because there's a possibility that someone may be trying to do a dividend capture and execute that call option and call that stock out of my account, and I don't want that to happen. As such, I will try to roll this position up to the $80 strike price in January. I'm also using some puts that I've been selling to generate cash to help me do this for hopefully a small credit. This will give me five more dollars to the upside and prevent the stock from being called away from me and offer a small credit to put just a little bit of cash in my pocket. You just got to love what options can do for you in trades like this. This is something that you should be doing in your trading account. Don't let your option positions sit there if they only have five, 10 or 15 cents left in premium when it will take several weeks to reap those rewards. Just go ahead, close the position out and enter a new position or roll the option to a later month. If you found value in this video, please hit the like and subscribe button as well as the bell notification and check out this video in the link above and in the playlist in the description below for more information on my actual trading strategies. Please remember to do your own research, hire a licensed advisor, but please don't just take my word for it. Don't just take my trading advice. These are not my suggested trades. I'm only using these trades for teaching purposes to hopefully help you become a better, more profitable trader. Know what you're trading and continue your financial education like you're doing right now. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.